Europe initially was not how it looks like today. For many centuries, it was plagued by wars, out of which two most important events are the Mongol invasion of 13th century and the Battle of Waterloo of 1815. The countries in Europe competed with each other for land, resources and power. However, Europe has seen the emergence of new countries, either due to unification or disintegration. Now the countries in Europe are independent and they are brilliant in their own self. Out of all these unification and disintegration, let us point out some most important ones. So the change in the political boundaries of Europe before and after disintegration of USSR is one of the most important political changes. So you see from these three maps, it's quite evident that the map or the political boundaries of USSR has been changing. USSR has disintegrated into 15 new states at present. So you see, around 1945, this is how the USSR looked like. However, in the year 1949 to 1989, it got divided into two major blocks, the Eastern Bloc and the Western Bloc. And finally, around 1991, it got divided into 15 new states and that is how it exists at present. Another important or rather significant political change was the unification of Germany as one nation. So, you see that West Germany and East Germany got unified into one nation that is Germany as it is now. So this was just another important political change besides the disintegration of USSR. However, at present, the continent of Europe comprises of 50 independent states or nations. Exactly. And this is according to the United Nations 2021 report. So you see, there are 50 independent nations or states in Europe at present. In this video, we will be focusing on the major political divisions of Europe. Interestingly, European countries range from the largest country in the world, that is Russia, and the smallest country in the world, that is the Vatican City. So you see that we have Russia right here in Europe, which is the largest country in the world. And then we have the Vatican City right here, which is the smallest country in the world. So you see that Europe has some impressingly varied cities and countries, both in size as well as their nature. So you see that the European countries are impressively distinct in their own selves. If you wish to learn or know about the capitals of these beautiful countries, then click on the link below to access the iDictionary feature. In this video, we will continue to learn about the major European regions. So the European regions are divided into seven broad divisions. So you see, the first is Scandinavia, that is right here. Then we have Benelux, that is right here, followed by the West Europe, which is right here. We have Central Europe, exactly at the center. Then we have Iberian Peninsula, right here. Then we have the Balkan states here and finally we have the Baltic states that is right here. So these are the major European regions. We will be learning about the first three European regions in this video. So the first European region is Scandinavia or the Scandinavian countries. Do you know there's a very interesting mnemonic to remember the names of the countries, the Scandinavian countries. Do you know the mnemonic? Well, it's right here on the screen. They say to Iceland, do not stay far. Now who says this to Iceland? So you see that Iceland is far away from the other four Scandinavian countries that is in the mainland of Europe. And what are these countries? We have D for Denmark, 
then we have n for norway we have s for sweden and we have f for finland right so these five countries are the scandinavian countries of europe let's know about the capital of these countries we have reykjavik as the capital of iceland then we have copenhagen as the capital of denmark we have oslo as the capital of norway we have stockholm as the capital of sweden and finally we have helsinki as the capital of finland so what do you see here on the screen you see a green city well exactly the name oslo that is the capital of norway was titled the european green capital for 2019 now though norway is doing or taking a lot of measures to cut down on emissions and to move towards a greener world however oslo is in the midway to go or to establish a green revolution oslo has set an example for the entire world it has taken up the goal of cutting down the greenhouse emissions by 95% by the year 2030 isn't that a great achievement and a great goal yes it is now to make sure that it stands successful on its goal it has taken some other measures too did you know that oslo has the highest number of electric cars per capita this only means that most of the people here use an electric car instead of cars that run on petroleum based fuels what does that mean it means that they are successful in cutting down a huge amount of greenhouse gas emissions that has led to global warming over the years right it's actually a great achievement other than that oslo is also famous for its oslo city hall the distinctive brown city hall in the city of oslo actually serves as a host for the award ceremony of the nobel peace prize yes now coming to iceland iceland is a scandinavian country we just learned Iceland is known for its scenic beauty. So from the picture it's quite evident how beautiful Iceland is. The beautiful snow-covered mountains, the beautiful cities here are amazing for a vacation. So if you ever happen to visit Europe, then you shouldn't miss the chance to come to Iceland and to witness this beautiful place. So here we learned about the Scandinavian countries. Let's continue to learn about the next European region that is Benelux. Benelux is right here. Benelux itself acts as a mnemonic for its countries. So you see that in the word Benelux, B E stands for Belgium, N E stands for Netherlands, and L U X stands for Luxembourg so these three countries are a part of benelux or the low land countries so let's locate the capital of these three countries we have brussels as the capital of belgium then we have amsterdam as the capital of netherlands and finally we have luxembourg as the capital of luxembourg now netherlands is the lowest lying country in europe wow about 26% of this particular country is lying below the sea level so we must remember that netherlands is the lowest lying country in europe with one third or 26% of its land mass lying below the sea level before moving on help me answer this question which is the lowest lying country in europe is it norway is it sweden is it netherlands or is it belgium yes you must have already guessed it right we just learned that netherlands is the lowest lying country in europe however netherlands is a beautiful place to visit 
did you know that the best quality tulips are farmed in Netherlands? Yes, exactly. And these beautiful rainbow-like fields are called the bulb fields. So you see how beautiful these tulips are. The best quality tulips are farmed in Netherlands. So if you ever happen to visit Netherlands, then you shouldn't miss a chance to visit these beautiful bulb fields. While Netherlands is mastering in the field of nature and beauty, its capital, Amsterdam, is equally important in maintaining the well-being of the environment. So you see that Amsterdam is known as the bicycle capital of the world. Did you know this? Well, if you didn't know this, then you must know that Amsterdam, that is the capital of Netherlands, is the bicycle capital of the world. Why so? Because most of the people here prefer traveling to places by riding a bicycle. There are special roads constructed or built only for riding a bicycle. So by preferring bicycle as the primary means of transportation, they are actually helping in cutting down the greenhouse gas emission and not using the cars that run on petroleum-based fuels. We all must ride a bicycle and burn our calories than burning fossil fuels. So here we learned about Scandinavia and Benelux. Now let's learn about the third European region that is West Europe right here. Now, the West European countries also have a mnemonic and it's a quite interesting one. So, fish under the ice actually gives you the name of the West European countries where F stands for France, U stands for the United Kingdom and I stands for Ireland. So you see, these countries are called the West European countries as they lie to the western, to the extreme western part of entire European continent. We just learned about Benelux or the lowland countries and these are Netherlands, Belgium and Luxembourg. So the West European countries actually lie to the west of Benelux or the lowland countries of Europe. Now let's locate the capital of these West European countries. Coming to Dublin, the capital of Ireland. Then we have London, the capital of United Kingdom. And finally we have Paris, the capital of France. Now, you all must have seen this beautiful tower. It is none other than the Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower in Paris is one of the most famous monuments in the world. For 130 years, this beautiful monument has been a symbol of the city of Paris and by extension of France. And since the year 1991, Eiffel Tower has been declared as the UNESCO World Heritage Site. Now let's talk about the most densely populated city-state in Europe. Yes, Monaco, that is a part of the West European region, is the most densely populated city-state in Europe. So to locate Monaco, you could come to the territory of France. Right here in the territory of France, close to the Italian boundary, we have Monaco, which is a city-state, a sovereign city-state, which is the most densely populated city-state in Europe. The country, United Kingdom, itself sounds like a big kingdom. It definitely must have a king or a queen. So the monarch of the United Kingdom actually resides in the Buckingham Palace. So the Buckingham Palace in United Kingdom serves as the official residence and administrative headquarters for the monarch of the United Kingdom. So in this video, we learned about the first three European regions, that is Scandinavia, right here, or the Scandinavian countries. Then we have Benelux, right here, or the lowland countries, and the West Europe, 
that is right here on the western side of the European continent. So Europe was not how it was earlier as it is at present. For many centuries it was plagued by wars where we mentioned about the two most important events, the Mongol invasion and the Battle of Waterloo. We also learnt about the two important political changes where we cited example about a major unification that is a unification of West Germany and East Germany and a significant disintegration that is a disintegration of USSR into 15 new states. We further learnt about the first three European region and we also learnt about the mnemonic to remember the countries of these three European regions. For Scandinavian countries, we had the mnemonic of Iceland do not stay far, while Benelux itself acts as a mnemonic for its countries and finally West Europe has a mnemonic of fish under the ice. So these three mnemonics help us to remember the countries of these European regions. In the next video, we will be learning about the rest European regions. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock test. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.